What's up, everybody? All right, guys. So um, recently, I picked up an error card. And it's one of, in my opinion, one of the most iconic, most ridiculous error cards of all time. And it just kind of got me to thinking, what are the top 10 error cards of all time? Now, just kind of looking back, I don't know if you guys remember this, but in the 80s, early 90s, error cards were just as important as rookie cards growing up. Uh, when you would open up a, you know, a, a box of 89 Upper Deck, uh, for example, you'd be looking for that Dale Murphy reverse negative as much as you were looking for any rookie card in that set. There was, there was a time, believe it or not, guys, where an 89 uh, reverse negative Dale Murphy would be going for more than a Ken Griffey Jr. rookie card. Now, of course... People didn't re weren't really that aware of Griffey and what he'd eventually accomplished. But can you imagine today, uh, people opening boxes looking for error cards rather than the, the big rookies that are in that set? That's how it used to be, where error cards and uh, rookie cards were on that same plateau. And um, just got me, got me thinking, like, what are some of the great error cards? What happened to error cards? Like, why aren't they as popular as they used to be? I think part of it... With error cards is that it may have jumped the shark a little bit. Um, you know, there are many uh, cards that were created on purpose, like the uh, the man Tops manufacturer, for example, where they would insert a card and they knew what they were doing. It was obviously not an error card, and they just kind of put them into packs, and they were doing them on purpose. And maybe that's what had it jump the shark. I don't know what, what it is, but just pe collectors are just not that into error cards anymore. And who knows? Maybe this is a, an untapped market that all of a sudden will become popular again as more and more, more and more people are uh, rediscovering the hobby. Now, before I dive into my top 10 error cards of all time, I wanted to give you guys four cards that I had to put as honorable mentions. Uh, I had to put them as honorable mentions because they're not really error cards. They're more oddities than they are error cards. Um, so, but definitely wanted to mention if you guys are interested in these types of cards, you should definitely check these four cards out. So first off is the 1991 Upper Deck Candy Maldonado card. So that's a card that you could probably pick up for about 10 cents. Uh, what's interesting about that card is on the back of the card uh, is... Uh, a, a person in the background, a famous actor named Corey Haim. Uh, so Corey Haim was a huge star in, in the in the late 80s. And uh, he, there he is just taking in a, a baseball game. And uh, he was in huge movies back in the 80s like uh, License to Drive or one of my favorite movies, uh, Lost Boys. So check those two movies out if you haven't. Uh, it's kind of a sad, tragic story. He was, a, like I said, a huge actor in the late 80s. Then he got into drugs, uh, passed away at a very early age. Uh, but is one of the the most interesting cards to see him uh, in the stands uh, on the back of a 1991 upper deck card. So another honorable mention is the 1990-1991 Sam Vincent Hoops card. So the reason why this card is interesting is because on February 14th, 1990, Michael Jordan was playing Orlando. And he, for some reason, his jersey, his number 23 uh, Bulls jersey went missing. And even though he tried, apparently he went asking around for if somebody could give him in the, in the stands, uh, a number 23 Michael Jordan jersey. And I don't know, for, for some reason, nobody was able to give that to him. And so the Bulls ended up giving Jordan a jersey number 12. Uh, and so for that one game on February 14th, 1990, Jordan wore number 12, uh, which is very odd to see him wearing that jersey. And on top of that, in Series 2 uh, for the, the Hoops cards, they decided to not uh, to take Jordan out of that card. So Series 1 is the only uh, version of that card that has Michael Jordan even in the photo uh, with Sam Vincent, so making it one of the most interesting cards of all time. Another honorable mention uh, from that exact same set, the 1990-91 hoop set, is the Mark Jackson card. So this is pretty dark, so bear, bear with me here. But Mark Jackson, if you look in the background, there is the Menendez brothers. So if you don't know who the Menendez brothers are, 
or if you weren't around during that whole trial, the Menendez brothers decided to murder their really wealthy parents uh, and in August of 1989. And uh, in between the, the murders and the uh, arrests in March of 1990, they went on a lavish spending spree and their parent with their parents insurance money buying Rolex watches, new cars and courtside tickets to New York Knicks games. Um, it is one of the craziest cards of all the fact that it exists, that the Menendez brothers are sitting there courtside and in, in that very short period of time um, after the murders is it's insane that the card exists. I totally understand if you don't want anything to do with the cards with that particular card, but it, it is one of the craziest oddities of all time. All right, guys, so let's do the top 10 error cards of all time, according to me. <laughs> so at number 10, I had to put the aforementioned Dale Murphy reverse negative, the 1989 upper deck. So growing up, um, 89 upper deck was one of the most, if not the most important set of all time. Uh, it was huge. I mean, packs were a dollar. That's how big of a deal it was back then. And that was unheard of for a pack of cards to cost a dollar. And then inside one of those packs, you could get a reverse negative Dale Murphy. Uh, and they were, according to Upper Deck, there were only 2% of the Dale Murphys ever made were the reverse negative. So they initially, they all came out as reverse negative, and then that was later fixed. Uh, so that's how you would get your hands on a reverse negative Dale Murphy. And uh, for me, it's one of the, the most important error cards of all time. At number nine is the 1969 Tops Mickey Mantle in white lettering. So 69 Tops cards, uh, almost all of them have the, uh, the, the lettering in yellow, but occasionally there were cards printed with white lettering. So um, I, I believe that the reason for that was because, in the, in, again, early on in the presses, there were some uh, white lettering cards that were produced, uh, and then they were all changed to yellow lettering. Um, Mickey Mantle is not the only card in the set that has white lettering, but the cool thing with Mickey Mantle, as you guys know, uh, Mickey Mantle is one of the most important, uh, players of all time in, when it comes to sports cards. Of course, there's the 1952 Tops Mickey Mantle, which has become one of the most iconic cards. And this was his last card, uh, pr uh produced by Tops that includes all of his stats, which is really, really cool. Uh, number 500. And the fact that, uh, there is an error card associated with that that has all the stats on the back, uh, makes it one of the most important error cards of all time. At number eight, I had to put the 1987 Don Russ opening day Johnny Ray Barry Bonds card. So 1987 Don Russ, obviously the rookie year for Barry Bonds. I realize that there's an 87 Don Russ rookie card, but 87 Don Russ, um, there was Barry Bonds' rookie and Barry Bonds, uh, one of the greatest hitters of all time, of course. And so by accident, uh, Don Russ uh, took a picture of Johnny Ray and and put that as the picture for Barry Bonds. And obviously, Johnny Ray and Barry Bonds are two completely different people. And Don Ross later uh, fixed that uh, error. But uh, by then, it was too late. There had already been cards printed and distributed to the public. And uh, the, the few that are out there uh, makes for one pretty awesome error card. All right, guys, at number seven is the 1999 Pokemon Hitmonlee Hollow. Uh, and uh, basically referred to as the Cigar Roll Hitmonlee. Uh, and the reason why I love this card um, is that it actually, there's one particular card that actually uh, a cigar, it looked like a cigar had fallen into the printing press and actually got printed with the card. And then in addition to that, there are a bunch that are stained um, and basically what happened was um, a piece of scrap paper fell into the printing press um, at uh, the place where they were manufacturing this called Crown Roll Leaf. And so initially people thought it was a cigar that fought, fell into the printing press, but that's just the name of the, uh, the printing press, Crown Roll Leaf Incorporated. Um, so there's one in particular that has, it actually says Crown Roll Leaf in it, and then there's a bunch that are stained with it, I, I just think it's one of the, the cooler error cards of all time. Um, at number six is a card that many of you uh, baseball collectors are familiar with, uh, and that's the 1990 Topps 
George Bush card. So this George Bush card, um, I'm considering an error because it actually wasn't supposed to be in any 1990 Tops packs. It was actually only supposed to be presented uh, to people in the White House. I guess George Bush played uh, baseball with Yale as a as a young uh, baseball player, and he wanted his own card. And so this was present. Tops presented this uh, to people at the White House, and um, but then. Uh, for some, for whatever reason, some of those cards ended up actually getting got getting included in some of the 1990 tops packs, supposedly, um, and so they were more distributed to the public somehow. And the interesting thing, just to add to that, was that there are some that are glossy, and the ones that are glossy are the the ones that were considered to be presented at the White House, and the ones that aren't glossy are the ones that somehow got into. Uh, public circulation. So a very interesting story behind, and that's why there's so few of them, is because they weren't supposed to go in any 1990 Tops packs, and the rest were presented to, uh, I think a hundred of them were presented at the White House. All right, guys, so at number five is the Alex Gordon card. So the, the reason why I had to put this on the list is back in 2006, Alex Gordon was considered to be one of the top prospects, and I guess Tops assumed that he was going to make the Major League Baseball team. Uh, it turns out he didn't actually make the Major League Baseball team until 2007, in which case his 2006 card <clears throat> should have never been made. And um, But with that being said, there were a bunch that were distributed to, to the public, uh, number 297, and um, there were a couple different versions, which adds to the allure of the error card. I guess there is a cutout card, there's a blank card, there is a blank silver card, and then there's the full version card, uh, which is considered to be a short printed error card uh, and is very popular to this day. So very, very cool error card at number uh, five. Uh, at number four, and part of the reason why I decided to make this video is the 1977 C-3PO uh, Golden Dong card, and there, there it is. <laughs> Just picked this up in a PSA 8. Um, I'll have to do another video where I kind of show this card off better. Uh, but this is one of the, uh, it, it's it's insane that it even exists. Um, the fact that this actually got distributed. And of course, as you guys know, a lot of the people that collect were kids at the time, especially in 1977. Uh, so basically what happened is this was printed um, and then somebody found it and then they uh, printed new uh, versions of the card without the golden dong there and um it, it's crazy that this card exists um it's one of the insane er errors c3po anthony D daniels error card and uh it's one of the most fascinating cards because you know 1977 is the first year after star wars so star wars gets released it's one of the biggest movies of all time and it includes you know rookie cards of luke skywalker darth vader c3po R2-D2, and uh, for this to be one of the first ever C-3PO cards <laughs> to have an insane error like this is pretty amazing in terms of error cards. All right, guys, at number three is the, and some people might have this at number one, but I, I for me, number three was the T-206 Sherry Meiji. Um, this, his name is basically spelled M-A-G-I-E, or at least was uh, initially and distributed in T206 packs like that. Now, a T206 cards, of course, being uh, printed between 1909 and 1911, um, but the, one of the biggest sets of all time, and they cr quickly corrected it to M-A-G-E-E, -E, which is the correct spelling of his last name. And um, one of the uh, Philadelphia Phillies' greatest players during the uh, the dead ball era had a lifetime batting average of 291 with 2,169 career hits. And uh, just insane, you know, uh, one of the biggest error cards, most valuable error cards of all time, and definitely deserving to be a top three error card of all time. Uh, so the top two, uh, probably, you, you probably already know who I'm going to go to. Uh, it's a matter of whether I put them at two or one, and I actually went back and forth on them. Uh, but I decided to go with, uh, at number two, uh, the Frank Thomas 1990 Tops, no name on front, uh, as the number two card on my list. And, um, it's, 
one of the most popular and in-demand error cards of all time. Um, if you look at eBay sold listings, uh, they are selling for, so in some cases, tens of thousands of dollars, uh, even for a low-grade version. And um, <clears throat> part of the reason is that uh, there were only about 250 to 500 of these uh, printed. Um, I actually have a couple of cards that have no name on front personally. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have the Frank Thomas, uh, but uh, it's still one of the, for whatever reason, one of the most sought after cards of all time. Then there's also the Tiffany version um, and one of the chase cards. And you never know if you open up a box in 1990 tops, you might hit the uh, Frank Thomas no name on front. And then of course, at number one, to no surprise, has to be the Bill Ripken FFR. The picture was taken in Boston. Uh, take my first round of BP. I throw my bat to the third base side because we're on the third base side. I run around the bases. I pick my bat up waiting for round two. Tap on the shoulder. Can I take your picture? I go, sure. Boom. Take it. And then I hear about it in June. I mean in January because that's when the cards came out. So I get a phone call from Rick Vaughn, who's now the Tampa Bay Rays PR guy. And he says, we got a problem. And I said, what? And he told me, and I go, oh, man. And I didn't really get all total recall until I saw the picture. And then it all came flooding back to me. But it was, I was not a being a bad person. I wasn't doing it to put it on a card. I did it for locker room humor. I wrote it on there just so I would know it was my BP bat. And then soon enough, you get caught. Would it count stay? Senior or junior? Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go Senior. <laughs> Senior wasn't real happy. <laughs> so anyway, that's it. Those are that. That's my list. Uh, let me know what you guys think. I'm sure I missed hundreds of error cards that I could have included in my list. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know what cards you think I should have included or had ranked higher or lower. Um, thanks for watching, guys. Please subscribe, like the video, and I will talk to you later.